I would recommend that they make this class in person and abolish this whole online nonsense because it doesn't make sense. I liked the class. I liked its online format. So if, if there's a, this like big disconnect between um, between the students and the professor, that's not a good thing. The professor. Has This is the story of Commerce 2010 and 2020, the introductory accounting prerequisites for the McIntyre School of Commerce. Designed mainly for first and second years, this is a high stakes affair. Performance in these classes will be a significant determinant of whether students will get into the prestigious Comm School. However, these classes are unique compared to nearly every other class at the University of Virginia. They are by far UVA's largest web-based classes with over 700 students total between them. You heard that right web-based. That means online learning, online tests, and no classrooms. A web-based class of this size, scale, and importance is completely novel at the University of Virginia. We heard a lot. Intro to financial accounting was the worst class I've taken at UVA. No joke. The absolute worst. I think they should keep it online. I know students might want an in-class alternative, but I feel like there's still the same abilities to learn through the online course. So, are these classes the beginning of an online revolution, part of the future of UVA, or are they simply a mess? First, we turn to thecourseforum.com. The Course Forum is a site where students can independently rate their UVA classes on a scale of 1 to 5. We didn't want to single out the accounting classes. Maybe difficult classes will naturally attract complaints. Instead, we wanted to see if anything appeared out of an independent search of the forum. In total, there were 38 classes with a score under 2.0. However, as we parsed through them, we found something interesting. The number one most commented class with a score below 2.0 had 49 comments with a rating of 1.96. It turns out that of all rated classes on the course forum, Commerce 2010 Introduction to Financial Accounting was one of the few with a rating under 2 and the one where the most people felt like they had something to say. Here's an example. This class absolutely destroyed my mental health, GPA, and overall well-being slash sanity. Online classes has its pros and cons, but this was called self-teaching. You will basically self-teach with an online textbook. If you aren't planning on applying to come, do not take this class. It will destroy you in ways I did not know were even possible. And if you are taking it for comp school, rip. It turns out students weren't the only ones to complain about the online accounting classes. Parents got in on the action. Feeling a little frustrated about my daughter's online accounting class, she took the final tonight and she just called me crying. My frustration is why this difficult prerequisite course to apply for Commerce School is only offered online. I feel like we pay good money to have face-to-face -face professors for such important classes. She's feeling so defeated right now. After hearing the sea of complaints, it would seem like an open and shut case. However, amid all of the unpopularity, we heard this. Yeah, I think I learned a lot. Overall, like the, my learning experience from the class, how much I actually got out of it was still overall positive. Like if I saw the information, I would be able to gather something. Students can learn. Maybe past all the complaining, the New Age classroom works. Some even like it. There are some complaints, but by nature, accounting is a hard subject. Maybe the online format just gives an excuse to complain. Perhaps we're beginning to see something great. I think the initial reaction is usually negative. I think it's, why are we doing this? Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of that comes from bad experiences in high school. Honestly, I think most students, once they get into the course, they're probably surprised by the amount of resources that are available. If they come in with an attitude of, maybe this could work for me, then I think they, they make the best of it and find out that, gosh, it really is efficient. I really do learn the content. I really do have ways of study that are perfect for me. This is Professor Roger Martin. He runs both COM 2010 and 2020. We asked him to break down the main benefits of the online format for students. Well, the biggest advantage from the perspective of the students is just the flexibility it gives them and the control of their time. I thought it was nicer to not have to set aside time in my schedule to like go to an in-person place. I feel like if I had to go to accounting lecture, I would have sat in the audience and 
like dawdled on my computer and not really paid attention. The other advantage is just then those resources are available all the time. So instead of coming to class and you have access to a professor for those 75 minutes twice a week, um, all this content is available all the time. We schedule TA office hours, uh, a lot of evening hours and weekend hours because we can do that. I saved it for Sundays a lot, but it was kind of nice to just know like, okay, accounting is the one thing that I have to log on and like do in my bed on Sunday. It's very efficient for students because if they're getting the material, they don't have to invest much more time. They don't, they don't have a class they have to go to uh, because they can do this in a short amount of time. On the other hand, the advantage also is if students do take more time, they just learn in a slower pace or a different way that's still available to them, it provides them more flexibility. Clearly, there are some benefits. We wanted to know what kind of student thrives in this environment. I guess you need to be able to teach yourself the material. If like you're not very good at being able to just absorb a textbook and put the skills into practice, I can see how there would be a disconnect. Some students, they, they don't like it, and I understand that. I think for those students, often the, the reason they don't like it is it's just very hard to manage their time. I'm, I'm sorry that has to be uncomfortable, I'm not sure that's because it's an online course. I think it's also because it's an accounting course and accounting can be hard for some people and I understand that. So I think a lot of times the, the discomfort with online is kind of clouded with discomfort with accounting. With all these pros, it would seem like online is the obvious choice. Yet, we still face an array of students, parents, and a former teacher who had problems with this system. Do their concerns outweigh the benefits? Or is this a case of painful but temporary adjustment? Web-based classes can definitely work. I think it can be like very efficient, but I think the problem with this particular one is that you are introducing accounting for the first time to these students. Like imagine if a kindergartner were to take their mathematics class online, right? That's kind of like, that's kind of how this is, right? And not that I'm saying we're kindergartners, but we're learning a lot of this stuff for the first time. So there are a lot of benefits to online classes. You're able to take that classroom experience to a lot of people. You can get your calls per credit hour very low, so it's great economically, and it also achieves that mission of expanding the access to academic excellence, um, if it's done right. This is Mary Middleton. She taught the introductory accounting classes for four and a half years at the University of Virginia as a contracted employee before her contract was not renewed, following the move to online. We asked for her thoughts. The downside is that you lose the other part of Jefferson's vision, which is that intimate relationship with professors. It seems like to me that when you have a classroom experience, then when it works well, it's a really beautiful give and take between students and professors. And it's not learning on just one side. I have learned from my students, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful dynamic that can exist there. The secret sauce is having a professor right there next to you doing it with you. That was what I was missing. I didn't realize how much I needed a physical teacher teaching me and showing me with his own hand and me having those questions available for him to answer directly in that moment. Students mature at different rates. And like my husband, for instance, who has been very successful, right? We didn't inherit any money. He was asked to leave by the university and get his act together and come back. And he did. And he had his act together. And he did really well. He would have flunked out of the university if he had been in an online situation. He wasn't ready. So if you have young men who that frontal cortex hasn't gotten fully wired up, which it doesn't until you're 22 to 24, if you got the Y chromosome, um, then they are really disadvantaged. So to be able to sit down with the level of maturity and discipline necessary to basically teach yourself accounting, which is a foreign language for most people, is a bridge too far for, I don't know what the percentage is, 25%, 30%, 50%, 80%, I don't know, but my feeling is that there's only about 15% of the students who can excel at an online class. I'd say probably like 75% of people don't really like it. I would be willing to say that 70 to 80% of the reviews that I've heard are very negative. So it, this is overwhelming numbers that I'm hearing about. You know, I always told students that their time at college um, was a time to grow up, to stop being a child and learn how to be an adult. And we're talking about the second year here, okay? We're not talking about fourth year. We're talking about second years. I just want to go on record saying I'm totally against online classes, particularly something 
of them as important as financial and managerial because they're required classes for getting into the McIntyre school, that that being your only option and everybody has to take it online. As a parent, I would not be happy with that, right? I'm paying for my child to go to the university. I'm paying for room and board, right? I'm paying for a live professor or at least the option to have that love. This is academic excellence that students can do by themselves. That's not what it should be. It should be, I think, taking the very best professors that we have and allowing the world to learn with them, not forcing students to learn on their own to see if they can. I think both, of the, both things should still be offered, where people have a choice to either take it online or people have a choice to um, take it in person. So it seems like to me that the best way to do it is to offer smaller live sessions in which they're filmed. And then people can sign in and watch it, either live or at their leisure. I, that seems like to me the best way to do it. In light of all these pros, cons, and everything in between, remember, this change could not have been a light decision. These are classes to get into the renowned McIntyre School of Commerce. This is a big time decision. Why here? This is an important part of the student experience. You're the very first introduction that someone has other than the intro to commerce class to comm school is this intro to financial accounting or managerial accounting class. You have to take the student experience into account because that's what you're advertising. That's your brand, that's McIntyre. That is what McIntyre is known for. This class changed my opinion of the commerce school because initially I thought it was something I wanted to go into. Finances and all that interested me at first. But once I took this class, I realized I did not want to step in that direction whatsoever. It totally slammed the door to that for me. In this myriad of controversy, we wanted to know the answer to, why did the Commerce School decide to make these specific classes online? Professor Martin provided some reasons why the intro comm classes made a good fit. Online education isn't perfect for every setting. So there are certain types of courses and content that I think lend themselves. Uh, and an intro accounting course is a perfect example. In terms of helping the student understand content, I'm not sure that I do anything different in a face-to-face -face class than I do online. It also solves some space constraints, so having that many students in a live classroom means we have to have a classroom uh, available, um, and that's always a constraint around rounds. So we used to teach this course in large lecture, 150 students at a time. I think students could still get lost and did. And I, and I think that's what current students kind of forget. They think of the alternative as a small class of 25 students where you know the professor. Uh, that's not the alternative. The alternative was a large lecture. Thus, to the Commerce School, the format seemed to make sense and solve the growing space and professor constraint. Note, however, that the change was not seen as a cost-saving measure and may not actually save money. In terms of cost savings, I don't, I don't know that we could add up the, the two columns and say which one's cheaper because it, it's not necessarily cheaper. Um, I'm still involved teaching both courses and so you know we haven't really saved a ton of headcount that way. Um, but we obviously we hope that's a savings and we hope what we learn is that the things we can do with technology we can apply other places and maybe all those cost savings then add up to be significant. History helps explain the change as well. The Fall 2017 COM 2010 class was taught by Professor Eichelberger, infamous in the class of 2019 McIntyre community. His class received a 1.83 on the course form, even lower than the current 1.96. As a comparison, the Spring 2017 section taught by Professor Backoff scored a positive 3.59. Again, this choice was not a small one, and clearly in-person classes can work, even if they had not for a single semester. Looking at the big picture might help us. Online education is becoming big business, and just an hour away, UVA has an example staring at it right in the face. Down in Lynchburg, Liberty University is racking in massive amounts of money due to its developed online program. This trend of online education is something UVA really hasn't dived into. However, that doesn't mean the university administration hasn't noticed. In fact, only seven years ago, the issue of online education led to an open battle. Former President Teresa Sullivan resigned in 2012 due to a multitude of issues, a significant one being online education. Proceeded was a protest of students and faculty who demanded her return, and since then the issue of online classes has mostly remained quiet. Not often remembered, though, is who was named to become interim president after Teresa Sullivan was gone. That turns out to be Carl P. Zeithamel, longtime dean of the McIntyre School of Commerce who never got his chance to act as president after Teresa Sullivan took her job back after a week. 
Could it be that the Board of Visitors, still vigilant of the threat and opportunity of online classes, worked with Dean Zeithamel to find a place to test a massive online class? In what better place than COM 2010 and 2020, given all the issues it has faced? Our discussions with Mary Middleton and Professor Martin hint at this. Well, I certainly understand why they're doing it. If you go back in time to what Thomas Jefferson envisioned for the university, it was very interesting because I did a little research on it. He was so brilliant that he envisioned that things would change, right? Times would change. And that he charged the Board of Visitors with keeping the university in step with those changes, to keep pace with those changes. And so I do think that the Board of Visitors felt very um, charged, right, to keep pace with the technology changes that are occurring, and occurring very rapidly. In my annual review, I was told by the dean that he had been getting a lot of requests from the Board of Visitors about online classes, and that they had decided to take 2010 and 2020 online. I don't know that there was a great deal of consultation with the accounting department at large. I don't think the, I certainly wasn't asked my opinion, but that's not a surprise because I wasn't tenure track, I was a contract employee. Because I was not consulted doesn't mean that everyone wasn't consulted, but I was told that they were not consulted. You will have to verify that. Um, so you're getting that secondhand from me. And now that's from people in the department, but um, the department should speak for itself, I think. Well, it was, it was within the Commerce School, and it was uh, mainly Dean Zeithamel and some of the associate deans and faculty just thinking about how do we develop this capability of online and distance education. I don't know that it, was a, it wasn't a decision made in a specific meeting on a specific day. It's just one of those ideas that it begins to form, and then you learn more, and you, you learn more about it, and you understand what the constraints are, and then you kind of build some momentum. Considering Dean Zeithamel's vision has consistently led the comm school to new heights, a desire to test online education in his school makes some sense. He is tasked with keeping UVA competitive and perhaps sees online education as a business opportunity. This COM 2010 and 2020 experiment helps UVA twofold. It explores educating a large population by using technology and tests new technologies for the rest of the university. A class setting is not a back and forth setting. You just can't do that in a lecture of 150 or 300 or 450 students. Um, so I think at UVA, any course that is kind of that way should, should take a look and think, do we really have to do it this way or could we solve some other problems by also thinking about doing this uh, online? Any student in any other comm course has benefited from this because the things we've learned to do with technology we can use in other courses, maybe not to make it online, but to use videos, to use student feedback, to use online assessments and things like that. So as we've learned how to do this in these courses, one of the important things we've done is share that across the school. However, there may be an additional effect. We were told these classes weren't designed to weed out but all students we talked to classified them as weed out classes. But who are the weeds? As we explored before, the online format may reward a specific kind of student. Perhaps this is the archetype of a student the Commerce School would want to gather in its halls. Intelligent, diligent, and independent. In this online format, however, maybe the young Mr. Middletons and Autumns of the world cannot thrive. Perhaps they never even apply to the Comm School. In the end, COM 2010 and 2020 and the buzz around them present many questions but few answers. Maybe something has to change. Or maybe nothing does. Maybe it's an issue of unfamiliarity. Maybe student discipline should rule the day. Or maybe it's an unfair expectation. Whatever the case, these classes represent a shift in the air. It's subtle, but potentially powerful. Education is changing and here lies an attempt of the university to gear up for the future. So. Are these classes the beginning of an online revolution, part of the future of UVA, or are they simply a mess?